And then seeing the new Blue Planet. Have you seen the new Blue Planet? No, not the new one. We have oh the my old God, one. The photography on that is just absolutely mind blowing. Really, it's eh? Incredible. Yeah. Oh, it is just. just to, and so, you know, I was thinking about my grandkids. And, you know, you talk about people growing up in creative families and they learn to do this and they learn to do that, you know, mm -hmm. and they, they get an introduction to the world and I'm thinking, well, you know, we haven't been particularly creative with them and, you know, what will they want to do? What can they do? Because, yeah. you know, my daughter homeschooled them for a while, oh, wow. but then her house blew away and so now she's moved to the States and she's in Missouri of all places, so wow. they're going to school now. So. Yeah. And what's your name? Uh, Tessa. Tessa. I'm Catherine. Okay, Catherine. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. So, Tessa, um, we're here in Joost van Dijk at Foxy's. Mm -hmm. And um, how long have you been uh, here at Foxy's? I came in 1971. Wow. And there was nothing here? There was nothing really except Foxy's, which was only the original bar. Yeah. And like a fairly minute kitchen, just a plywood shack at the back and a, um, and a storeroom on the other side, you know, and a walkthrough and, you know, a couple of drums at the back where we caught water. And there was a house up here and it used to have a cistern and that's the other place we got water to cook. Wow. And I, we came across the Atlantic. I came from London and met the boat in Gibraltar and then got friendly with Foxy. I didn't have an American visa, so I couldn't go to the USVI. I found on the boat that I didn't want to be a hostess or a cook on a charter boat. Right. So, and I couldn't go to the US anyway. So he said, would you like to get off and stay here for the season? So I thought, oh yeah, I'll stay for the season. And I was into hotel management and I was thinking of going like to places that then were going like Jamaica or oh. the Bahamas or somewhere like that that I'd go on. Yeah. Uh, that never happened. <laughs> Life got in the way. Right. And so you married? Yeah, I had a child in 73 okay. and well we didn't get married till 76. I wasn't really in favor of marriage and I, I've all, I seem to have been leaving since the day I got here, I keep saying. <laughs> <laughs> and then I don't. Yeah. And um, anyway, so yeah, I had one child and then I thought, uh, that's enough for now. But then 10 years later, I had two more. So. Oh, lovely. Wow. And um, how did you, you know, what obstacles and challenges did you face in, this, in that whole process of like, you know, deciding, first of all, to come here and then, you know, and then building this from what it was? Yeah, well... I was 24 when I got here, so, you know, it was still an adventure. Right. It was like an adventure, and it was, you know, it was this bar, like, on the sort of outskirts of nowhere, and it was just a bunch of guys here, basically. Most of the women had left, like, after the transition from the agricultural way of life to the tourist oh. way of life, yeah. a lot of people had left. A lot of the families ended up in St. Thomas and then in New York or Boston oh. or somewhere else. And um, there weren't many women here. Mm. So there was just a bunch of guys hung out at the bar, played music. Yeah. And so there was a little party every night. All I had to do was cook pretty simply. Like we had lobster all the time that we got from Anagata mostly. Yeah. And um, so I just cooked and cleaned and just did everything that you had to do to keep it going pretty and much. so it was all like the sailors that would come in and that, that was your business yeah and it was different kinds of sailors in those days it was more more the adventuresome you know because it was bear boating started about that time the moorings yeah. started in like 1970 71 i think csi were there a lot of the boats were in st thomas then i mean there wasn't a lot of anything right i mean you know like if you got 13 boats for New Year's, you know, that was a crowd and 
we oh, well. roast a pig, we bury a kid in, pig in the ground and, you know, do a kind of luau style sure. because someone had taught Foxy how to do it. So yeah. we used to bury the pig and sometimes come out the wall. <laughs> Sanitary, or had to have, yeah. you know, like today, everything, you know, these boats are like floating hotels. You have your own stateroom, you have your own bathroom. It wasn't like that. It was either the the rich on the charter boat, that, like the one I came across the Atlantic in, you know, a 73 foot schooner where there was a, a captain and a, and a, um, a chef and a hand, a deck hand, or something like yeah. that, always a crew. You know, they either led out to the rich or to the more adventurous who wanted to go sailing and came to the Virgin Islands, you know, at that time when bear boating started, or with a skipper, you know, but yeah. it was different, different people. Sure. And um, the hurricane that passed through here last year, how did that change things here? I mean, other than the physical, you know. Well, it's yet to be really finally you know, noticed how much it will change things. Mm -hmm. You know, it stopped the cruise ship business dead in its tracks. And we've never really liked mass tourism. Um, but what do you do with a virgin population, you know? How do you create jobs and stuff like that? So the government, in its wisdom, has, you know, built a cruise ship port and encouraged cruise ships, but they stopped. Um, people had to, dis we, we have a lot more immigrant workers, I mean we're in danger in the, from the 70s we were predicting that the Virgin mm -hmm. Islanders would be an endangered species and they kind of are yeah. because there's lots of other people here, you know, like workers who come from different places and, you know, and then other people who come and do businesses, a lot of South Africans have come here and started businesses. Right yachting businesses, for instance. There's not many Australians, there's not many um, Europeans mm -hmm. as such. There's a few, but not as many. But yeah. some people had to go home because, I mean, we had to let all of our staff go pretty much. We kept a few, but we had a staff of like 40 because we had another restaurant at the other end of the island, so we were totally wiped out. Yeah, so, you know, and that was a shock to me. to a certain way of life and here because there's a very small labor pool and a very small um, selection of jobs people tend to go into tourism and waiting tables can become a career you know whereas anywhere else you know you do that while you go to school or you know mostly people don't make a career out of it yeah. but here that's different you know because of the tourism and, you know, it's somewhat limiting because it doesn't really um, enable kids to go into other, you know, the number of other alternatives are mostly with government or the offshore companies, yeah. you know, things like that. You know, it's not a lot of opportunities for kids. But funnily, especially, if, I think of expats and born native Virgin Islanders, a lot of them end up coming back. They've got this, like, strange oh. love relationship for the life here. Yeah. Any regrets? Um, yeah, to an extent I wish that, you know, maybe, you know, because there's a downtime every year and I think that I could have gone different places, done different things, you know, at those times, you know, done things more adventurously and haven't done it. You know, I tend to be a lazy traveler. I go somewhere and, you know, just hang out. Yeah. A lot of the time, small islands, because they don't require much effort. You don't have to do a bunch of research on, you know, if I go to cities and things, I'd rather go with somebody else. Like, you yeah. know, they do all the research and say, <laughs> we're going to go see this, we're going to go see that, you know. Yeah. Sort of like that. But Any uh, words of wisdom for young kids that are either looking for work or for an adventure? or? You mean from other places? From other places, from here. Uh, yeah, just a life kids, kind of wisdom. 
yeah, to me, the kids from here, I mean, it's, it's getting better because they're improving the education system and I think that they're trying to, um, you know, open up other opportunities and, uh, you know, there will be more chances for kids if they get an education and, and get out. And plus, there's a lot of do-gooding people, you know, that come from other countries who are prepared to, you know, um, sponsor or take kids so that they, you know, like my daughter, for instance, went to Lehigh in Pennsylvania, mostly due to a couple who, you know, wanted to give her the opportunity. And there have been other people like that, and it was wow. more seldom. But now now we've actually had somebody win a gold medal in the, in the Commonwealth Games, yeah. you know, which Fantastic. was pretty amazing. But, um, you know, the people coming here, come here with, you know, an open mind, I would, I, I would think... You know, it, it, it's a great learning experience because you're more on the survival level than you are at other places. You're in the real world as opposed to, you know, getting an Amazon drop on your doorstep whenever you want it. And um, it's just, you're in the real world. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to teach my kids, survival skills. Because if everything breaks down, you need to be able to survive, yeah. you know? And I think in a place like this, you're more likely to learn them mm -hmm. than other places. Thanks. Yeah. And uh, in five years' time, where do you see yourself? Oh, my doctor asked me that. Where will I be? <laughs> I don't know. It's a really hard question, but it's one I'd really like to know the answer to. Foxy's 80 years old. I'm wow. 70. And, you know, so your life changes. And I see myself still partially here, but maybe not all the time. And then, again, you gravitate towards your kids since my grandchildren are in Missouri and maybe a lot of other places too depending on the education they get there you know you tend to follow your kids or your grandkids yeah. I think and you know maybe I'll be closer rather than far you know going back to Australia is awfully far yeah. or New Zealand or the would South your, Pacific. Would your kids want to take this over? Do you think or no? that's a big question my one daughter she's into doing stuff like you she does that she's done it we we, we think about doing a, a reality show because oh. we say we would be the world's best reality absolutely show. we got the kardashians uh, she, totally. she's done one you can look it up it's called the colwood cartel colwood cartel C -O -L -L okay okay I will. Colwood, C A L L W W O D Cartel. Okay. Camila does that. And she's starting up again in Missouri. She's also a, a masseuse and she's really good at that. My other daughter's uh, sort of quixotic and she's around. She sticks around and we're hoping that she'll take it up. Yeah. But no guarantees. No. Uh, no guarantees. And the grandkids come and visit? Well, they've only been gone a few months. Oh, okay. But so new. Uh, my daughter's applying for U.S. citizenship. Their father was had U.S., so so they got they're so already the U.S. So they were lucky. But I don't know about her. She's applied for a green card because she can't work. And so supporting four kids in the states. Oh, I mean, she's lucky. Well. She's in a cheaper place. Yeah. You know, a, you know where life is a bit more affordable there. Sure. Because she has a husband not the father of the children and he doesn't he has a fairly menial job and to support four kids is difficult but yeah we'll see yeah wow we'll see. any other uh insightful words of wisdom mm -hmm. for people not that i can think of right now okay yeah. great well thank you very much it's a pleasure uh, you're welcome pleasure talking to you yeah <laughs> nice talking to you too